Okay, here's the second box coming along. Uh, this was the first hole I did. Then I did that one, that one, and that one. I'm heating it up less and in a smaller area. And this wants to pop out this way, but then I take the other two pieces of PVC and push it against the sides, and it makes a perfect mold to come out pretty nice. So I'm getting the hang of this. I stuck two lead weights in the corners and made it a whole lot easier to work with. And, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't move around. It's very nice. And Boomer's again got, Boomer doesn't have any shortage of this. Nice tool. I'll show you real quick. I want you to see how it just gets shiny. I learned to heat it up even just by going like this. Wake it all up first. Then start going a little slower. This works pretty quick. You'll see it starts shining. Yeah, you can see the reflection up in here. You'll see it start to shine. And because we've been going all over it, it's nothing to get them last little spots all shining along with it. There we go. You see it shining, reflecting off of this. It's real nice. Right about there is pretty good. Give it just a little bit more. Alright. Stick the last piece of pipe in. Push out here. Come on, get in there. Oh, a little bit more heat maybe. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, but doing this on the lower end of the frame makes the plastic come out much nicer. Okay, that's the corner I just did. Looking pretty nice. Oh yeah. See this both sides of that. And over here, the last one I did over there. These came out a lot nicer. Looks good from the side. Another box ready. All I gotta do is mount the other things on and uh, we're ready to start going on the roof and tackling out these 20 solar panels. a closer look at the solar panels we've got five in a row five in a row five in a row and five more in a row that's 20 solar panels 205 watts each that's right at about 4,000 watts these two here are gonna go on one of the boxes that I have this whole section here goes to one grid tie inverter one grid tie inverter another grid tie inverter and the last grid tie inverter and the wires got to run all the way across over to here well so far this is what I got I've got the conduit with the wire pulled through connected there connected there connected there hey here's my brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl hello Daryl hi Daryl what do you want to do Daryl I want to kiss you on the cheek uh oh <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're back That's my other brother Daryl <laughs> All right, He's so we're connected here. So we're connected here, and we continue all the way on out over here. And I got the rest of the wire. And my brother Daryl, brother Daryl, all Showing right. the Christmas lights. All right, then we got the conduit running out to about here, and it stops. Wire pulled out, and it goes way over there. So I got all the slack I need. Well, right behind where you see these tables here is the fuse box. <laughs> so we're gonna let the other guy give him plenty of extra conduit to play with and plenty of extra wire not this whole piece here but he'll have plenty left over when I'm done I measured it a little long about 10 foot so I get over here I got a little bit to play with and I can pull it all through right now I've got to make the curve in a piece of conduit and get it over here and set up to where it's going to go to one box and the other box the grid tie inverters are stackable on the AC side so that's a wonderful thing uh, I've got four wire coming in here and we're gonna hook two of them up to one and two of them up to the other and uh, ground both the neutrals and that should supply the system wonderfully I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies many good things to you and yours well it gets dark here at night 
That's a good size area with all this wood and a narrow walkway. Somebody leaves one thing here, somebody can get hurt. We took $10 and bought a 100 LED strand, which isn't using very much wattage at all, about 7 watts tops. I plug it in so we can just about leave this plugged in 24-7 and don't have to worry about not being able to see. As a matter of fact, when it's on, I can see all this and I can walk back there because it's still at an angle and I can see just like it's a full moon almost. So that's pretty good lighting. Very efficient. Very cost worthy. Not bad. We'll take another picture of these at night. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Many good things to you. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Anyway, I used to work doing what they called first articles. Somebody would have a prototype and bring it to the factory uh, to mass produce it. I was the one that did the first ones. That's why they called it the first articles. First articles had to be within a thousandth uh, tolerance or a hundredth. But anyway, and everybody else uh, on the production floor copied what I did. And so they had to teach me a few things which I'm going to show you here. This piece of metal inside curls like this and then has a seam on one side. That's right up here. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but down inside a little farther, about halfway right here, about that wide, there's a little piece of the metal that sticks up, and that separates the two halves so that the two wires don't hit each other. If somebody pushes the first wire in, it doesn't come up to here, then you can't get the next one in. So this is a full inch long, half inch in the middle, with a little bit of width taken up, so you figure just less than half inch, I've cut back to here. This black wire on this 12 gauge wire, this black shielding here, is uh, basically just extra coating. This is what your normal wire would look like. So, it's 12 gauge. This goes in. I want to put that crease to the top and the hump at the very bottom. Uh, the professional crimpers have a round side on the jaws that look kind of like this hump right here. And then a, a nipple that would poke up and that would go into the bottom side, the same side that you see that nipple on there. You never push the nipple into the uh, seam side. It spreads it apart, makes your joint weak. So basically, I put the seam up, as I always do, and the little nipple inside there is up. So I'm squeezing on the flat sides. That's the correct way to do. Shove this in all the way, not letting any of the strands fray out. Come out dead center between these two lines and squeeze down. So this is going to be my negative one. One quarter inch only, and do not touch the wire. If you touch the wire, you wind up making it weak, and it usually comes off when you do this. Stick it on there. Find out which is top and bottom. Very good. Right about there. And it should go pretty quick. If you try to squeeze these any other way than through the top and the bottom on it, these plates will want to separate. And you get a real weak joint and you can just pull them off like that. These are solid. And I like that. I've got to color this one black. So when I do the rest of the work here, I don't get it mixed up. The connectors that were on this are right here. There we go. This is the positive and this is the negative. We can't use these. We thought they were like these other solar panels, or boomers told me so. Uh, thought they were like these. I was kind of hoping and wishing until I got up here and saw them. Uh oh. Well, anyway, we're saving the connectors. Left a little bit on the end to do something with later. They're great connectors. For now, we got the butt connectors. This is going to be my positive. I might as well make a plus sign out of that. That'll work. I'm happy with it. And the colored one is black. I'm going to keep them all separated, get all these butt connectors on, and double check them before. This is the negative, yes, and this is the positive. I got to go down and do the other four down, the other three down here. Already did the one behind the camera. When I get all this done, then I'll grab them totes up here. There's something else I'll show you. So we got all that strung all the way from here. And I took a bicycle wheel, stuck it in the middle of that, and stuck it uh, in between two of the rungs on a trailer. And I pulled the conduit around in the inside of the bicycle wheel so it made a nice curve. So we didn't have the benders handy. Somebody had them on a job or something. And I've already pushed the wire all the way through. And it goes way down over there, probably about another 10 foot past the awning. Anyway, we got most of it installed up to here. All I got to do is put a junction box here, junction box right here, and continue on to the uh, to the next one over here behind us, which would be a little farther down that way. And we're going to put the box right where I'm sitting. So anyway, it's kind of hard to do camera work here. I'm going to say bye for now. You take care. Many good things to you and yours. Hasta luego.